OMG. <laughs> you love me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, okay, okay, I'm at zero. I gotta hurry up. <laughs> I'll show you, I'll, I'll come back and show you in a second. Hey guys, welcome back. We're continuing on from the last vlog where I showed you guys that the hubby came in with some of my early Christmas presents, which were the colored jars for canning. And uh, it was a very sweet moment. The funny thing is, <laughs> I was kind of freaking out and I was on the phone talking to my son whenever he was on his way to the house and I was asking him if he could stop and this and that. And the hubby was asking me, well, what kind of jars do you want? And typically he likes to chime in conversations, but like in the bed bad timing <laughs> and so I was kind of like just hold on let me ask him before he passes it and so uh he kind of just like okay and uh walks away and I figured I'd tell him whatever he said or whatever when he came back and instead of coming back empty-handed he came back with the jars and it was super sweet but he didn't know what jars I needed because I wouldn't answer his question so he just brought in all the jars <laughs> so sweet hey guys Good morning. I am war. Look, I'm missing a nail. I am tired. <laughs> so I went to sleep at 6 30 this morning. Uh, the hubby gets up at 4 30. I made him his coffee, sent him on his way, went to bed at 6 30 to finish up a few batches of the rooster and the um, actually just the rooster. I have three pots to pressure can today of rooster broth and chicken broth. And man, it is a process and it's time consuming because meat product is like 90 minutes. It's time consuming. And, but I was like, you know what? It reminded me of the days when I would work in the restaurant and I would do double shifts where I met the hubby and uh, I would work those double shifts to serve other people. And now it's a different feeling because I'm working a double shift to serve my family, which is pretty great. But I am so tired, but it's okay. I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm awake. <laughs> I'm gonna get my coffee and I'm just gonna dive right in. Like it is freezing outside. So we just got hit with heavy hail and then pouring down rain, lightning and thunder in a matter of like, 10 minutes. <laughs> it's actually what woke me up out of my sleep. It woke me up at like 1130, which I was like, okay, I was, that was my plan to wake up anyway. <laughs> but it's going to be another busy canning day, just waiting in between and prepping things. So I'm going to start off with just getting the broth going. I still have pineapple to do, so I may uh, start prepping that, but probably not until I know I'm almost done with the broth because the broth is just going to be a long waiting process and managing temperatures in between kind of uh, getting the process going and then preparing the next batch and then as that process starts to come to an end start to bring up the temperatures again and make sure everything is kind of even so that everything is going in there hot and all the stuff so I'll probably take the time to to wash all of the jars that the heavy surprised me with yesterday. I'm so excited. I'm like, now I don't even know what I want to put in them because they're so pretty. <laughs> it's got to be some of my favorite stuff to can. Um, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to show you what I did. Here we go. So I remembered that I did these and I was so excited to do them because I could pull some tomatoes out of the freezer and guess what I forgot. I forgot to pull the tomatoes out of the freezer. So I still have tomatoes in the freezer that need to get done as well, along with the green tomatoes that are downstairs. So it's I guess it's okay that the green ones haven't turned red yet. <laughs> All right, so I did a lot of tomato sauce. They are the half pints and some pints. And then I got into the chicken. These are the rooster, no, this is the chicken and chicken broth. Unfortunately, one did not seal, so this one will be dinner tonight. I do have one broth and everything else sealed though, which is pretty awesome. I had a feeling that some of these were gonna be questionable because they were lids that came on jars already and I threw them into the oven and they looked like they softened up quite a bit, but there was so much going on yesterday that I didn't check every single lid and it was already too late. Like I was like, crap, 
I forgot to look at, you know, what I put on there to make sure that I was putting on the good ones. So yeah, I got a one that didn't seal. These are big pots of broth. I put them to boil before I went to sleep. So they're still warm. And then this is rooster broth. I took these out, y'all, and I didn't even wait. I went to bed. So all of these sealed. How exciting. Look, I didn't even, yeah, I didn't wash anything, nothing. This one is still hot. So, yeah, this is another rooster broth, but this is unfiltered. I haven't filtered that out yet. So it's about to be a day, y'all. It is about to be a day. So I'm going to get my coffee and just get started. I do have to say that taking on this new life journey has waken me up to a lot of different things and it's kind of given me a way to feel okay with the kind of parent that I am. I know there's a lot of like really awesome moms out there who are caring and nurturing and soft-spoken and all of that and I just can't do that. I can't be that. I try my best and I am a very fair mom. I do listen and I do have very personal conversations with my kids as teenagers and I'm mother in my way. But this has kind of given me another path to show my family how much I care about them. Because when they get up early in the morning and go to school and they come back, a lot of the times I'm still working. And they know how long it takes for me to do these things for them and that I'm willing to do that. And it does fill my heart whenever they prefer the things that I put on the shelf before they'll reach for other things on the shelf. And that to me is very rewarding. And it just gives me another resource to kind of put forward to them and show them that it's good to learn and it's good to grow and do things differently no matter what. And in the process, we have good conversations when I'm in that kitchen, when they come in and put their hands in and help. Okay guys, so I've had to put the brakes on for a bit because I was going to go out and get jars today, find some of the half gallon and quart jars because I have product downstairs that I need to get transferred into half gallon jars and we need more quart jars for all the broth. The hubby did bring me my new jars, but I can't bring myself to use them for broth because we don't go through it fast enough. I feel like I would have to use these for product that we go through often like beans or mushrooms or something like that because I could play with them more often. I don't want them to sit on a shelf for a long time until we get to them and before I'm able to use them again. So I'm going to be selective with the pretty jars to use them for things that we use very often and go through very often. So I was going to go through while one of these processed for the 90 minutes, which is an hour and a half, and I was going to buy some more jars and the hubby went instead because he had to get some feed. But... The hubby gets distracted when shopping since he's not allowed to go to the store often. <laughs> he got distracted, but they didn't have, there's no jars. So like I said, it's not, it's been an issue for a while. Typically when I see them, I try to get them, but I haven't gone to the store lately. So I haven't been able to pick them up. The one he went to is kind of further out. So it's more homesteady type community. So I'm pretty sure that's why they don't have any. And then the one that I'm going to go to tomorrow is a little bit closer to the city, probably not as common for them to be sold out closer to the city. So hopefully they have some. But for now, this is what I've got. All of the tomato sauce jars are all washed and cleaned up. All of the chicken and rooster meat that I processed yesterday and this morning are all washed and cleaned up. I got some broth going. I still have this big pot of rooster broth. And then we have more rooster broth here. He brought food earlier, so everyone's already eaten, so I don't have to cook. So that's why I'm not like tripping. But we have quart jars of broth. And then I did reprocess two jars that didn't close. <laughs> I did reprocess two jars that didn't close. These I'm going to have to clamp down really quick. So one thing I have learned with our pressure and our pressure canner and the broth, whenever you do the cool down period and let it come down to zero naturally, and then you take that weight off, I usually wait about 10 minutes whenever it comes to regular everyday food product. But I've come to realize that with the broth, 
you cannot wait 10 minutes. It is way too hot. Too much pressure is going through that thing. And there's nothing stopping the broth from boiling and uh, like bubbling up and out. That 10 minutes is not long enough to wait after removing the weight to open up the canner before you get siphoning. I've come to realize that 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes is a lot better and you can see the difference. So these were the ones that I waited 10 minutes. And you can see when I opened it, this one sprayed out. And I had never seen that before. So I knew that it's because there was just still too much going on in the canner to open it up and expose it to air like that. So I threw the lid back on really quick, let it calm down, and it was a total of about 20 minutes. So I will no longer be removing the lid 10 minutes after the zero point. I will wait 20 to 25 minutes after the zero point when it comes to uh, just full liquids like that. Here's the ones that were 20 minutes. Big difference. Everything looks good. It's still at the one inch head space. Um, some of them were underfilled just by a little bit. And then you can see there that these look really good too. So I would definitely say when it comes to broth, tack on 10 more minutes to kind of let it relax and chill out in that pot before exposing it to the air. Because when you release the vacuum and do all that stuff, these things like they get dangerous. They're hot and they start to siphon and spray liquid and then you're losing your liquid and then you're gonna mess up your seal. And it's a lot of stuff you don't wanna deal with. I got lucky and all of them sealed, even the one that sprayed out. I won't do that again though. I will make sure to give them more time to kind of calm down. I still have my tomatoes and pineapples downstairs too. So I still got a long night, but I love it. So it's fine. As I sit here and try to edit this video, I am reminded that the majority of all of this food product was free. All of the tomatoes were free. The roosters were free. So all the broth was free. And then everything else was already an affordable purchase price. The pineapples were 77 cents. The chicken were 49 cents a pound. So I was cooking about six to seven pound chickens for about $3.50. And it's just amazing to think about because now my pantry is full of delicious, amazing food. And it was not only on a budget, but it was blessed to us by others. Okay, so I don't even know where I left off today. I know I was canning and then the hubby came home and they had to get all the plants wrapped because it's supposed to be like three days of freezing temperatures in Texas. And he wanted to be prepared, try to save the plants that he could save. And uh, oh, I found a listing on Facebook Marketplace because it was 4 a.m. and I was sitting there and I was trying not to fall asleep while waiting for the banana bread when I finished canning this morning. And so I did what one does and I got on Facebook. I checked the marketplace for canning supplies because uh, jars are in short order over here. Like they're going so fast and you can't find them. Or if you do find them, it's always the ones you don't need. So I got on Facebook to see what I could find. If there was anything there that was, you know, in a good uh, pennies on the dollar kind of price for me. Because over time, I like to stock up on things on a dime. That way it doesn't cost me a lot of out-of-pocket money for this process. I found a listing for quite a few things actually together in one. And I was like, no way. When I first started researching canners, I was going to go with a digital canner because I thought, you know, I was scared <laughs> to use a pressure canner. And I was really nervous to just dive in. Well, good thing the hubby bought our um, All-American 925 because if he hadn't, I wouldn't. <laughs> But he did, so I kind of just left the idea behind of the electric canner. Well, now that I do a lot more canning, I need multiple things working at the same time. And sometimes it's hard to 
have extra burners because you have the burner for the pressure canner, you have the burner for the lids to keep that going, or you have the burner for whatever it is you're trying to keep hot and boil or whatever, you know, so you're taking up a lot of the stove to fit another canner on there consistently that cannot move. So I was like, well, maybe an electric canner will do because it'll be off to the side. I can just do what I got to do with that canner and it'll be, do its own thing. And then I can do what I need to do with the big canner. Anyway, I saw this listing and they had it listed previously at 175 and they had reduced it and I made an offer of 125 and let me show you everything that came with it. I already took some of it out of the boxes, but let me show you what I got. We're in my laundry room, so there's laundry on the table. But for starters, I got the enamel water bath canner, which is substantially smaller than my tamal pot which was also $25. So I would suggest you get the tamal pot because it also comes with a rack in it, or you can just put a rack in it. Definitely something to keep in mind. It's just in the regular kitchen area, not so much in the canning area. This one's in the canning area. Anyway, all this stuff is brand new. She bought it to start canning, but it included the $25 water bath canner. I don't know what it costs now, probably $29. And it also included the Nesco pressure canner. I was very excited to see that this was included in there. This one retails for $160 online right now, and I think that's with like a small sale or something like that. But $160, and I paid $125 for everything. So that's pretty awesome. It is brand new. We took it out of the box. It has everything in it, instructions, all of it. It's all in there. And I was so happy to see that that was included. It also came with several boxes of jars. These were uh, from 2019, so that was pre-COVID, which means quality standard was different. It was better quality, made me very happy. Unfortunately, one of the packages, all the lids were like defective. They all had a dent in the side of the lid, which I've never seen before, for an entire case to look like that. They look like this. Look, along the edge, you see that big dent? And I just don't want to risk it and lose all of my jars. So I'm just not going to keep that. Anyway, they had these stored in their garage. And it's a sad kind of story. Okay, so I was really excited to get the deal, right? I was I was like, hey, where are you? You know, I'll go pick it up today, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> so I thought it was a young girl. And I get there and uh, an older gentleman... Uh, approached me at the car and I was like, Hey, how are you? He's like, he said, how you doing? You here for the canner? I was like, yes, I am. And, uh, he told me when we were walking back up, I said, I said, uh, have y'all plugged it in to make sure that, you know, it still works from whenever you got it or whatever. He goes, no, he goes, uh, it's, it's never been used. He's like, my wife bought it because she was going to start canning and, and, uh, she just passed away in September and I felt horrible. My heart was like, <gasps> Because y'all, we've dealt with so much loss this year. And so I just told him, I'm like, I'm so sorry to hear that. I said, I couldn't understand to that magnitude, but we've experienced a lot of loss this year too. And I hope everything gets better for you guys. And he said, yeah, you know, it's hard. And I told him when he helped load the truck, he loaded it all on a little red wagon. <laughs> so cute. And uh, pulled it out to the truck. I said, well, for what it's worth, I would rather my supplies come with a story and I would rather share a passion with someone who understood that passion. So me having her supplies to me just seems a lot better than walking into a Walmart and buying it new. And he goes, well, I'm sure that would make her very happy because she would want it to go to somebody who would actually appreciate it and use it. But I'm happy to include it and I know it came from a loving family and someone who was passionate about the same things that I was passionate about. Anyway, I have all kinds of stuff going on right now. I have everything upstairs. All the jars are almost completely cold and ready to come down here, but I don't wanna bring them all down here until I cleaned up this area because now I have all kinds of stuff down here and I gotta get it situated. So this week has been like abundantly, I don't know how to explain what I feel like this week is. I feel like we've been extremely blessed. And if you've ever had conversations in faith where you kind of question, not question your faith, but you know, your faith is shaken or whatever, and you start to feel kind of like a void or something, and you realize that you've been detached 
from spirit. Um, I feel like I've been so busy and I've been keeping my brain occupied and I've been taking in a lot of information just for research and stuff and stuff that I'm doing and interested in. But all of that is just background noise. And sometimes when it's like right in your ear, because we all have AirPods, uh, when it's right in your ear, you forget to listen and have those conversations that are healing in spirit. And so I was kind of feeling like that. I felt a little detached because it's been going on for so long that we've been so busy. Just questioning a lot of things that were, you know, faith-based. I feel like God knows how to use people that surround us to let us know or remind us of our blessings and humble us through the kindness and generosity of those that we've chosen to surround ourselves with and the decisions that we've made to get to this point and the things that we're doing to increase our knowledge and connection with spirit and you know earth and body and all of that stuff and if you don't know me i'm a i'm a I'm a spiritual person, I believe in God, but I'm not religious. And I have a lot of friends who are religious, who know a lot of things, who can give me all the quotes. And I only take that information from people that I trust because if it came from anyone else, it would just kind of go through one ear and not the other. And I feel like in times where I don't have those people close by, God finds other ways to make himself known and to uh, kind of remind me that he is with me at all times and has us in his hands and I feel like he kind of showed up and showed out and there are things sometimes that I I hear very clearly that uh you know can't I don't feel like they're from anything else except you know my conversations with my God anyway we've been blessed beyond what I could imagine and I am extremely exhausted. <laughs> the first night I started the canning process, I didn't go to sleep until 6 a.m. The next morning I didn't go to sleep until 5 a.m. But it was all worth it. It was extremely worth it. The first instance was from a, a friend of ours. Her name is Liz. She's here in the community and her husband's name is Joe. So Liz and Joe are awesome. They are friends and we enjoy their company and their stories and conversations. They are a huge just wealth of knowledge and you know it's one of those things where you where you didn't have elders in your family and they are the elders that I wish I would have had and so now that I have them I enjoy them and they talk to us all the time anyway so they were leaving and they're clearing out their garden beds and she's like hey I got a bunch of tomatoes if you want to come get them guys I must have got like 400 tomatoes like 400 tomatoes there's no way it could have been any less it was a lot and I still have a big bag of tomatoes from the last batch that they gave us, but it was amazing to utilize that and preserve it and extend the life of it and be able to incorporate it into our home and then share that with them uh, whenever we reach for a jar or when I'm done processing, I'll take her some. And, you know, they don't need much because it's just the two of them. She's like, no, we don't need much. We just need, you know, you can bring us one or two and so just to enjoy. And I was like, okay. But that started it, it was amazing. And then after that, I got a phone call from a stranger. Usually I don't answer phone numbers, I don't know. I don't have a voicemail message on my phone. This person called and I was like, that's a number I don't know, I don't answer it. And then they called again and I was like, okay, maybe that was just some trying to check and see. And then they called again. And I was like, okay, this person is persistent. Let's go ahead and answer and see who it is. And it was a lady who got my number from a friend in the neighborhood and she knew her through church and she said that they had a dilemma that they came across 15 roosters that they were going to harvest but they weren't ready to harvest them because they needed a group of a few of them to be together to do all the harvesting to kind of work on it together and everybody take a little bit this that and the other but they didn't have all of that together not realizing that the roosters were going to show up and there was 15 of them and they needed somewhere to take them so he's uh, I spoke to both of them and he said, yeah, you know, I'm just not ready for it. I don't have nowhere to put them. I don't have nowhere to, you know, nothing to feed them, to give them water or anything. And uh, he's like, you know, you can have them. We'll take them to you um, and y'all can harvest them or whatever. So we got 15 roosters, which contributed a headache because <laughs> those are the jars that just gave me the most problems. But it was so worth it because I get to contribute that to my home by putting in work and then our children get to learn amazing lessons in working 
hands-on understanding the value of the life that give that's given for food we get all kinds of life lessons and nutrition and benefits from the life that is given so we have the tomatoes and then we got all the roosters for meat and broth and then while the hubby was harvesting the roosters a friend of ours came over and gave us some delicious homemade wheat bread that he made and it was amazing and to share that with us because making that stuff is not it's not easy for everybody and to just bring it over you know and stop by and be like hey here's this thought you might want some that was a big blessing while i was canning today the hubby told me to send one of the boys to the greenhouse because uh, one of the girls there was cleaning out her garden it, she her and her family they own the greenhouse in the in our community so they were she was cleaning out her garden beds and had a bunch of stuff a bunch of herbs for people to come pick up before the freeze and she was willing to share and be generous and it was just like so amazing i have all these herbs sitting upstairs and they're gorgeous and they're going to be great in our food and then <laughs> on top of that i found this awesome deal but i after picking up the canner and stuff i headed over to alma's house because my bff said that she had some stuff for me so she gave me a case of 12 of these black eyed peas which is fine with me we took them we'll eat them and she also gave me the American Harvest Enriched Spaghetti from Durham Wheat. They are non-GMO 16 ounce packages of pasta. Can we just? Yes, please. And then she gave me three bags of sweet potatoes because she knows I preserve food and that I can preserve the potatoes even if I can't use them right away. And plus, Christmas dinner's coming up. I can make a sweet potato pie if I feel like it. But... How awesome and generous is that? Anyway, so all of this is just to say, I guess if you want to be connected with spirit, shut off the distractions. <laughs> it's that simple. It's literally that simple to be in tune and just kind of have those healing conversations in self and, you know, just all of that. And I am just overwhelmed with the amount of blessings, exhausting blessings, <laughs> but the amount of blessings that we have been given and humbled by it because it cost us nothing but time like are you kidding me for people to think of us like that to bless our whole family because our whole family benefits from it and then also the pride that i have in myself for learning the process and taking the information and and converting these things that would otherwise go to waste into prolonged nutrition for my family it's just amazing and I'm so grateful to have this skill and add it to the list of things that I like to do so I'm just gonna clean up this space and tomorrow will probably be the day that I put up the jars it's already gonna be like one o'clock in the morning and I mean <laughs> what's new I've been working overtime this past week to get things done and uh, I would like to go to bed at a reasonable hour. So I think I'm just gonna kind of get things into a good stopping point and then I will put it all away and make it all pretty tomorrow, which I am so excited about. Then I can do the calculations to see how much the pineapple cost to get however many jars we have, um, cause they were 77 cents as I shared with you guys on Instagram. So I got 12 of them, 12 pineapples for 77 cents a piece. If my jars were 60 something cents a piece at 99 cents, imagine what that's gonna be. That's gonna be amazing. So excited to see that. But that's it. I'll check back in with you guys later.